Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Xiaomi Redmi K20 Pro. Now today we are trying a new ROM. In fact, I've already installed it and I'm using it since the last uh, one to two hours to find out what is good, what is bad. And it is very rare that we have covered a OS vendor based ROM and this is one of those. The name of the ROM is Fluid. The version is 1.1 official. It comes with G apps pre-built. The size of the ROM is 1.4 gigs. All the changelog and everything else will find out in the complete video today. Day, but I will also show you around the ROM what are the features what you should expect what are my initial impressions and later in the day we will also do a gaming live stream on this particular ROM with the FPS and heat counter as well but before we get into all of that if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video at the same time in the description of each of my videos you will find a link to our telegram community you can go ahead and join us there and that's a lot of fun over there now now, last but not the least, if you haven't already, please click on the join button and support the channel and become a premium member. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Smartphone Tutorials. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So as I said at the start of the video, this is a latest ROM. The build date is the 9th of January 2021. This comes with the January security patch, of course, and it has fixed the Google Apps issue. So the good thing here is that, uh, you know, the restoring of apps and data from Google's end, which not used to be, which was not happening on Android 11 ROMs is now happening because it worked perfectly fine for me. So that is a good thing. Fixed clock styles crash, FOD icon animation, redesign about phone menu. So we will check that out. New voice over LTE icon, the OS 11 one, so Oxygen OS 11 voice over LTE icon is included. Status bar tuner, some GPS related fixes, some light related fixes and new KCAL implementation in the kernel. Okay, so that was everything about the change log. Now what about the ROM? So first things first, let's actually go to settings over here real quick. And when you go to settings, let's go to say about phone. Okay, and let's see over here. So if you remember, they did say that there is a new about phone menu and new it is. It looks very, very clean, very, very subtle. All the information we've already discussed, the device name is Redmi K20 Pro, the battery capacity is displayed, but the RAM somehow is displayed 5G which is incorrect but that's okay it's a custom ROM and we can ignore that much it's not a functionality related issue so that should be completely fine now moving on from here if we actually go to system you have a bunch of options over here languages and input for keyboard front camera settings you have the camera LED you have the front camera raise dialog that is a warning front camera sound effects is something you have a lot of options over here i'll keep it disabled and you have the option to calibrate if your front camera is not working as well so related to the front camera when you move from oss to a stock android 10 or a custom rom based on android 10 directly uh, there are some issues i will make a dedicated video on that but for now in the camera section over here these are the options and if you go to gestures you have quickly open camera you do have system navigation which is a very very standard thing and all the other swipe to screenshot so three finger swipe screenshot is available you can share edit and delete this so that is another good thing now over here you don't have the advanced power menu option but if you press and hold the power button you will see that advanced power menu is available so that is another neat addition over here right now apart from this you have date and time backup and reset options and all the usual usual stuff so quite a lot of customization here as well while you know we are yet to look at the complete customization options but nonetheless let's actually go ahead and have a look at the launcher over here so first uh, let's actually go to the home screen settings and these are the settings or these are the options or customizations as far as the launcher is concerned are available and according to me this is pretty comprehensive and it's pretty useful the launcher has been very very smooth and subtle you do have the google discover page to the left as well well, which is a really really neat addition and you do have your weather widget over here and stuff like that you can access the notification drawer from anywhere on the screen and the app drawer from the bottom to top so that is a good thing and uh, Apart from this as one unique thing, the last used application is always displayed in the center over here. So that is something really, really neat. Now, apart from this, uh, as I mentioned, this does come with a 
K20 Pro does come with a finger on display and as you can see it is very very reliable it is very very fast I have used it with night light with low light with always on display and all the other things so the fingerprint scanner works pretty pretty you know reliability and pretty pretty quick so that is something really really neat now if we talk about the dialer and the call UI this is what you have this is a stock Google pixel dialer it doesn't have call recording but that's okay because you do get all the other options as well Moving on, we can actually talk about the camera application. It does come with the Google Camera Go, which does have portrait mode for the front and rear camera. And as you will see, the front camera is working absolutely fine and the portrait mode works absolutely fine as well. You can go ahead and install a fully featured G cam as well. And that works pretty, pretty fine with night mode and all the other options. And the clarity and the quality of pictures in that particular application will be better than this Go application. But to boot, you will not have any much issues because this default camera application will just get the job done. And if you use your camera occasionally, you should not really have any problems now talking about the quick settings panel you do have a lot of options over here although the only thing that i didn't find was the fps meter cpu info and all the other things but that's okay we can always use a third party application like kf mark so screencast screen record all the other options are available and if you switch to the dark theme over here you will also notice that this is actually not the pitch black dark theme that you find in a lot of custom roms this is like the dark grayish sort of dark theme which is available all right now next up let's actually go to settings and have a look at a few options so first up let's quickly have a look at fluid customization now as i have been saying in each and every custom rom video that you know giving customizations is one thing and laying them out in a very very professional way is another thing so fluid team seems to have done a very very decent job over here you do have themes as the first option you can you know customize your different accent colors i'm using the default one because i just flashed this particular rom this morning you have different types of notification icons there headline and body font you can change your font over there you do have your clock style, lock screen, clock style and stuff like that. So over here you have double tap to sleep, you have double tap to wake, voice over LT icon, enabler, disabler, that is there. Vibrate on touch can be enabled and disabled. And so what you will you know notice over here is that you don't have a hell lot of customization, like a ton of customization is not there, but whatever is there, it is to the point, it is precise and it is available for you to go ahead and use it. Now, apart from this, if we actually go to the display settings, let's see what all do we have over here. You do have these DC dimming and high brightness mode, which is really, really useful outdoors and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and use those modes. You can enable both of these from the quick setting tiles as well. Dark theme can be enabled or disabled. And if you go to the sub menu, you don't actually have any problem with turning it on or off over here. You do have the scheduling option as well. As always in Android 11, you do have styles and wallpapers to customize the wallpaper and the layout and the look. You have font size, display size. So all the options that you could ask for are already available in this particular custom ROM. Now, apart from this, if you actually go to the battery section, you will notice that you do have adaptive battery, which is available. You can enable the battery percentage and you have battery saver as well. So what I don't see over here is thermal profile, which is fine. But uh, you know, as long as it handles games and everything else fine, the thermal profiles thing is completely fine. But yes, it is absent over here. Apart from this, if you go to sound, you do have live caption and all the other advanced Android 11 features and the my sound enhancer or MI sound enhancer is also available. Now, what you would also notice till now is that I am playing around with the ROM since the last five to 10 minutes and I've not noticed any stutter any any lags any issues or anything at all so that is how rock solid stable this is there is one peculiar bug has been there in oss vendor based roms for a very long time the 3.5 mm audio jack uh, the remote controls like the mic would not work sometimes and the remote buttons would not work sometimes so i use bluetooth and i use a 3.5 mm audio jack to transfer audio to pc while streaming and strange has used this one of my friends and subscribers so he did have this particular issue so we will talk about this in the live stream and you know I will go ahead and analyze this in today's day with wired and wireless earphones and all the other things and maybe if I'm if I have to go ahead and make a full review about it I will make sure I go ahead and 
take care of this bug. Now moving forward, we do have a dedicated privacy tab in Android 11. Google has paid special attention to what app uses, what permission and all those options are there like app context, permission manager, show passwords and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and control your activity and stuff like that. So everything is mentioned from Google's end over here in terms of privacy. But if you actually go to security, you do have Google Play Protect, your security update and all the other things. But you do have face unlock, fingerprint unlock and you would see that I've gone ahead and set up four fingerprints over here. Basically, I've set up my thumb, same thumb twice, left and right to make sure that the fingerprint unlock speed is enhanced even further and that is something really really nice the face unlock works very reliability and pretty pretty quick but it is as of course we don't have the hardware so it's a very very basic face unlock and it works just fine now next up talking about recents the recents follow the android 11 theme as you can see over here and at the bottom you do have the screenshot feature so all the Android 11 goodies are available and banking applications are working absolutely fine. Even if you talk about the RAM test, you would notice, let's, let's actually launch a few applications over here. So you would see we launched Call of Duty and then we launched PUBG Mobile, then we launched YouTube. What you should also notice over here is how subtle, smooth and quick the app opening animations are and this is pretty pretty neat now we have opened a bunch of application and as you would see let's actually go to the first application that we opened which is call of duty mobile and as you can see it is still in memory so my point here is that the memory is managed very very well so the recent apps are not you know killed automatically and stuff like that and the gaming so far has been a decent experience as well nonetheless in today evening we will be going live using this rom and this phone itself for two to three hours and let's see how well the battery backup the gameplay and everything else turns out to be for now this was a quick review of fluid rom based on the oss vendor for the k20 pro let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video of you know, step by step how to go ahead and install this ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Smartphone Tutorials. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.